questions. Okay, so I thought we would get a little more creative perhaps in our approach to Little Round Top and maybe kind of work our way around Vincent Spur, uh, something that frankly would have been difficult to do if we had had 50 of you on a bus. So I guess we're going to try to take advantage of our technology and our lack of attendance today to try to do something that, oh, maybe a little different. Um, I'm not going to do the 20th main position only because I feel like probably most of you have been there and done that before. Um, and I'm sure more than one of you was groaning, ah, oh, he's got to do Chamberlain again. Uh, We'll skip that today because, again, I feel like that's probably a story or an aspect of this that most of you have seen many times. But as I, as I kind of alluded to at the last stop, I am not a little round top basher. I am not a Chamberlain basher. Chamberlain and the 20th Maine were ordered to hold their position at all costs, and damn it, they did that. And that's a good story, and they are heroes, and they deserve all of our credit. So if you're one of these people who wants, you know, wants to hear the guide trash talk Joshua Chamberlain, you're probably on the wrong Zoom. But again, I thought we would kind of bypass it just because, again, I think probably most of you know it or, or have done the story. Um, so what I thought I would do instead is focus a little bit more on Chamberlain's commanding officer, uh, Colonel Strong Vincent, uh, the 26-year-old native of uh, Erie, Pennsylvania, Harvard-educated lawyer. And, you know, because I don't feel like Cha because Vincent gets maybe the recognition that others do in and around Little Round Top, I thought maybe we'd spend a little bit of time talking about him and his defense and his positioning. Now, I'm standing in front of the 83rd Pennsylvania Monument. And if you can pan, thank you, if you can pan up on that, you get a nice view of the monument. Uh, the 83rd Pennsylvania was Colonel Vincent's old regiment, and at Gettysburg was one of the regiments attached to him within his brigade. So you can see uh, right behind me, recruited in the counties of Erie, Crawford and Forrest, but most notably up on top, you have a common man who looks a heck of a lot like Strong Vincent, right? They don't make mutton chops like that anymore. But the point being that at the time these monuments were put in place, New York and Pennsylvania specifically prohibited honoring living individuals below a certain rank. And in this case, um, they were not allowed to say it was Strong Vincent on the monument. But it sure looks like him and what he might have looked like on that fateful day, kind of um, steering his troops into action. Now, before we get into the fighting, just a little bit around the terrain. Uh, can you pan around here? We are like literally standing uh, in a jungle right here below the 83rd PA monument. Uh, hopefully you're not standing in poison ivy or anything like that right now. You see, I made you look, but um, it didn't always look like this. You know, little round top, particularly the this slope and the western slope, which would be beyond uh, my left shoulder right now, was more open, rocky, rugged, and less sort of jungle-like than it looks like today. I have a photo taken of this very monument, one of the William Tipton images, and I forget what year the picture is, 1890s, something probably of that nature, give or take a few years. But the key being, look at the open slope on the photo compared to where we're standing today. Totally different. Yes, the National Park Service does have plans, to rehabilitate Little Round Top, and hopefully one of the areas that they will tackle will be the area that we're in right now, which people often refer to as Vincent's Spur, because this is the area defended by Vincent's Brigade on July 2nd, 1863. So it's kind of a cool photo. Scott, can you retrieve my notes here? Because I do have a, 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 thank you, sir, because I do have a quote or two that I want to read just to kind of bring us into position. So, Sickles is failed to occupy Little Round Top. Warren and Meade realize this. Confederate attack is coming this way. We need reinforcements on the left flank. So messages and couriers start going out specifically to General George Sykes of the Union Army 5th Corps to get the 5th Corps over to the Union left flank ASAP. Division commanders, brigade commanders of the 5th Corps start moving in this direction. Strong Vincent, one of the brigade commanders in the 5th Corps, is going to receive a message that was intended for Sykes to come over here towards the left flank, or General Barnes, who would have been Sykes' div division commander. Point being, 
Point being, Vincent really shows great initiative in getting his troops up here. And I just kind of want to read the sequence of events to you. Um, and most of this comes from a guy by the name of Oliver Wilcox Norton, who was uh, said to be Vincent's brigade flag bearer during the um, uh, during the action and supposedly rode near Vincent during much of this. But according to Norton, uh, General Sykes sent an aide looking for division commander Barnes, but the aide bumped into Vincent instead. And with eyes ablaze, Vincent demanded to know the captain's orders. Captain, what are your orders? And the captain replied, where is General Barnes? Vincent said, forget about that. What are your orders? Give me your orders. And the captain answered, General Sykes told me to direct Barnes to send one brigade to occupy that hill yonder, which they're referring to as Little Round Top. Vincent said, I will take the responsibility of taking my brigade there. And returning to the brigade, Vincent then di directed his regimental commanders uh, to bring the brigade to the hill as rapidly as possible while Vincent rode ahead to reconnoiter the position. So as I said, I think one of the things that makes Strong Vincent not only a great hero, uh, but a great officer, is the initiative that he takes in getting his troops up here. And as many of us know, it's going to play a critical role in the defense of Little Round Top. So with that, Vincent's brigade is going to come up to this area that we know as the Spur. And I want to refer you right now to one of your maps, which if I believe was the one that's labeled Little Round Top, map number four. Another attack on Little Round Top begins. Take a look at your map. Get a look at the positioning of Vincent's brigade on that map. 20th Main on the far left. 83rd Pennsylvania, about where we are right now. 44th New York, kind of behind me and to the right. And then last but not least, over on the extended right over here, would be the 16th Michigan position. So the famous 20th Maine is Vincent's left flank. The 16th Michigan is going to be Vincent's right flank. And we're going to take a walk over to the 16th Michigan position and talk about the fighting on the right flank that doesn't always get the attention that the left flank fighting gets. So next stop, you'll see us approaching the 16th Michigan position. Yeah, so folks, what we're doing now is we're walking up a little footpath from the 83rd Pennsylvania. You can see the castle to the 44th New York on the uh, summit of Little Round Top. And we're going to continue to work our way over towards Vincent's right, or my left, which would be the 16th Michigan. But we wanted to let the camera roll for some of this just to give you guys an idea of the lay of the land. You know, big rocks like this one, but covered up today by weeds and growth and God knows how much poison ivy and other stuff like that. But if I get poison ivy, I'm doing it for you. So I hope you appreciate that. All right, let's keep going. Eric, are you paying me enough for poison ivy? No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. All right, hopefully we don't get lost here. They might have to send out a search party. Holy cow, is this overgrown. <laughs> Look at the big rock though, isn't that cool? All right, pause for a minute. Well, we made it through that jungle that uh, we refer to today as Little Round Top. Here, come on over here a little bit. And this is a marker that many of you may be familiar with, but maybe don't often come down here to see. And you can see there's a memorial on this rock behind me. General Strong Vincent, wounded July 2nd, died July 7th, 1863. Unfortunately, 26-year-old Strong Vincent uh, would not survive this battle because during the heavy fighting on this part of the, uh, the line, as we'll see when we get over towards the 16th Michigan, which is now just over on my right, uh, the right end of Vincent's line was under pressure. And while trying to rally troops in that, uh, in that area, Vincent was struck by a bullet and mortally wounded. Now, we don't know today, this is kind of one of those things that Gettysburg nerds like to debate. Uh, you know, does this spot here mark the position of where Vincent was mortally wounded? Or as many of you may know, up above the up next to the 44th New York Monument, which is behind me, 
there's a rock carving that also basically says Strong Vincent fell here July 2nd, 1863. So we have a rock carving on top of the hill. We have the monument here behind me. And nobody is really sure why we account for a discrepancy between the two. What some accounts suggest and what I think happens is during the fighting Vincent was probably a little bit more on the top of the hill to supervise more of his line which is what a good combat leader should have been doing and what I think is he was probably up there and struck by a bullet uh, as Texans and Alabamans were kind of working around his right flank, but after he was struck, he was possibly carried down here, which would have been near the brigade headquarters area, before he was ultimately carried off to a field hospital, and as we said, died on July 7th. Uh, really a sad story. So he was taken to a field hospital behind the lines. Uh, Oliver Wilcox Norton, the staff officer who I mentioned in the, uh, in the earlier video segment, basically said that Vincent was suffering greatly from his wound and in great pain, but Norton came up to him and said, and said, the boys held the hill, we're still there. And hearing that on his deathbed, supposedly Vincent smiled and that comforted him greatly. Uh, but unfortunately, Vincent, as we said, did succumb to his wounds and they put him in Colonel Vincent, they put Colonel Vincent in for a promotion to Brigadier General. Uh, so fortunately, Strong Vincent did die a uh, Brigadier General. Now again, would people know more about Vincent today had he survived? As you all know, he didn't live to tell his story like Joshua Chamberlain and other guys did, perhaps. But clearly, I think the Army and the country were deprived of a great hero uh, by the 26-year-old Vincent's untimely passing. But did it happen up here? or down here or up near the rock carving, who knows? But again, it's one of the things that Gettysburg people still like to debate.